Welcome, everybody, for the presentation of this conference, Zero Project Latin America 2021. In this session, we have the success cases of diversity management. For these, we will have the presence of four companies, which are very important, and they will talk about their experience in the development of internal management of diversity strategies in the labor environment. To begin with this, I will we will make have the presentation of inclusion is our seal, which is a success case of the SMU company that I'm part of. Who are we? We are a network of supermarkets with the biggest coverage at a national level. We are important employers with uh, at a national level for with a lot of relationship with customers, suppliers, and more than 25 thousand employees, which makes us the third biggest supermarket chain in the country. We have presence in the 16 regions and 165 communes of the country. We have a multi-format model that lets us satisfy multiple needs for purchase of our customers using the majority's uh, wholesale markets, telemercados, logistics division. Our mission and principles in diversity are mostly we are committed on making Chile a more inclusive society. This is reflected in our principles where diversity, gender equality, equality and labor conciliation between life and work are the most important principles in our labor practices. This leverage our cultural seal, which we call CERCA. It establishes that we need to be close. We work with excellence and respect. We act with respect and honesty. We collaborate within and outside, and we move in an agile manner. Using this model of culture, we included diversity and inclusion that through which we work and encourage inclusive leadership. We have actions to reduce biases and stereotypes. We have talked with experts in the topic with a lot of training for working teams and we work in what we call our communicational program that's called let's not make an issue of this which lets us talk about everything that's related to inclusion and diversity in our company especially our diversity and inclusion model starts through the strategic planning, where we establish as a strategic axle to have an aligned and com compromised organization, a committed organization. We defined strategic initiatives where the management of inclusion and diversity is key in every element of our company, starting from the definition of four groups. We talk about gender, disability, generations, and migrants. And using those groups, we define seven action axles where culture and inclusive leadership lead our development. We have labor inclusion of all these groups within our companies and work installations. We also work on the action axle in the support for caregivers. So we are we aim our work at those people that maybe not being part of an inclusion program but they live with people that live inclusion every day. We also work on a component that's called awareness to contracting companies. We want to relate with organizations that are as committed as we are in the work of inclusion and diversity. We support and connect entrepreneurs with initiatives, mainly in inclusion, where for instance, using the Elam Foundation, we've been able to incorporate mermaids made by people from that foundation that have Down syndrome. And we also work with foundations and organizations that even if we are not experts in diversity and inclusion, we support ourselves with the organizations that are committed on this work every day. We work with the Scudeme Foundation, with the labor intermediation, companies with different foundations like Teleton and different organizations that support 
the everyday work of our labor execution. And as a company and through our works, through our workers, we are committed on supporting initiatives that are for gathering funds for the organizations that work in inclusion, specifically for disabilities. For instance, we work with Teleton. We are the supermarket of the Teleton, how we are called, and we support the gathering of funds for children that are being rehabilitated. And we also work with the School of Foundation in our campaigns. We also work with the Club de Leones from Magallanes, where we also gather funds and we work on what's called the Magallanes Days for the rehabilitation of children in the centers of the further south re southern region of the country. And a little, to show you the work of our model, we have, even if F F SMU is to work for a more inclusive society, it's important to beyond telling this through the presentation, it's important to have the actors themselves and the families that we impact to give their testimony. For a more inclusive society. In Unimark, we work to make Chile a more inclusive society. Hello, my name is Lucia. I'm 36 years old, and I just finished my training process supported by the Descubreme Foundation in the Manquehue Unimark. My experience has been very good because I've learned to work by myself and to make my own decisions. It's been a huge value for us because she's very responsible, very caring for details and she likes what she does she does this very joyfully and with a lot of dedication and that's contagious and for me it's been a new experience but i've learned a lot from her she's taught me about being patient tolerant i've helped her a lot and she's also helped me what I've noticed is enthusiasm and how caring she is for her work. She cares for it. She comes happy home every day, telling us what she did every day. She works, she has to do something in one part of the supermarket and the other day she has to do something in a different part of the supermarket. So even if she has some difficulties, she can work, she can perform properly in the society. She can feel useful. It's really wonderful. As a mother, we are really, I'm um, really thankful for this when I need help or something like that, I feel with the trust of reaching somebody without fear. And they they care for me and they accept me and they are willing to help me. In the professional environment, she's grow, grown a lot. She can work by herself now and she wants to learn. That's the fundamental part of Lucia. She's very respectful, not only with other workers, but with her partners, with her customers. She, she can, no, they can notice this. When a customer asks her something, she works with her, with her, and we can do the same. This process of being home was very complicated for me during the pandemic. I would have loved to be working, but it was a risk for my health. And I'm very glad that they didn't take the opportunity of continuing working. I felt that they valued my work here. And that's a satisfactory experience. And it's gratifying that somebody, and that they keep the work for them. It means that maybe I'm, I'm working properly and I'm good at my job before the pandemic. I've made a huge effort to help by the people from the foundation and also in, they need to help the, the parents. I feel that I have to, I've had to be treated to respect the Lucia's autonomy because for instance, when she started in the training in Dunemark every day, I was mentalized to come with her to introduce her so that they could see that she was not alone. There was a person with her. She wasn't an orphan. But I noticed that really the only thing I was doing was to jeopardize her. I, it was a huge effort to stay home and let her come by herself. And I told her, Lucy, go by yourself. But nobody knows how hard it was for me that day I graduated with her. 
it's been a very positive experience for her brothers, for me, and we are very happy to see her happy. We are very thankful for you, Mark. I feel good working here. I feel that it's comfortable to work here and there's a, a very close environment. And I feel that there's no need to make difference between people. And I feel good. I feel that they feel me as an equal. I feel good to belong to Unimark. Well, as you were able to see, what we look for as a company is to create spaces for inclusion within our society, establishing equality of opportunity for everyone within our working spaces. And that is what we live every day as diversity, encouraging inclusion of space, opening possibilities and showing an, the work in an equal manner, what you learn here and how you grow with everyone that we work with in this company, it's fantastic. As you were able to see in the video, many times you think that you will never learn something from somebody else and they show us, they prove that it's not like that. Everyone has something to contribute with, something to teach. And that's the message and the value that we take advantage of. And that's the beautiful of, of being a diverse company, to look in each and every one of us, the value we contribute to the rest. Thank you very much. Now, to continue with this success experiences, I want to leave you with Jocelyn Pimentel, she's the management of diversity and inclusion of Caja Los Andes, occupational therapist of the University Andres Bello, with a diploma in diversity and inclusion of the Adolfo Ibanez University. She's part of Caja Los Andes since 2018, and she has more than eight years of experience in the inclusion of diverse groups. I leave you with Jocelyn Pimentel. Muchas gracias, Alvaro. Hola. Thank you, Alvaro. Hello to everybody. My name is Jocelyn Pimentel, and I'm here to tell you about our area of diversity and inclusion at Caja Los Andes. First, about us, and then what has been our path. We are a private company with our own equity that has been working for six decades, providing benefits and social products for all the people that are affiliated to us throughout the country. Our aspiration currently to 2023 is to be recognized as the creators of a new way, a new form of social security with inclusion and transparency where people have an easy experience, safe and transparent that makes them feel unique. And that without a doubt, is something that is lived in also when we talk about diversity and inclusion. At our beginnings, we started in 2012 with a belief from our general manager and our board to be able to be a reflection, a mirror of what exists in society and reflecting its diversity in Chile. We created a program called Mas Inclusion to include people with disabilities in our company. And we started in this way, along this path, as you can see here, to be able to fulfill with this goal. But our final goal is to be able to create a movement within the organization where inclusion is lived and is part of everyone who work at Caja. For this reason, our path towards inclusion can be seen here in 2012-13, we started with this program called Mas Inclusion to incorporate people with disabilities. We had many falls though. We weren't experts, nor did we have much knowledge, but we knew that it was important to listen to 
people that live with disabilities and to learn together and to support or to receive support from different organizations and specialists who provided their help for this reason. In 2015, we decided to make an assessment within our organization to determine how we were doing things and how our collaborators perceived the actions that we were doing to foster inclusion of people with disabilities. And we were able to see that there were things that were doing well, but there were other interest groups or groups of interest that we could leverage with and to expand our scope. In 2016, with this assessment in hand, we launched our diversity and inclusion policy and we advanced slowly but firmly to be a more inclusive and diverse organization. The following years, as you can see, we have been acknowledged by different organizations for our work. And today, what we seek is to be able to share our experiences so others can use it and use theirs to by understanding that the world is changing and changing rapidly. Our legacy, therefore, currently from 2013 starting with this conversation between our general manager and our board is to guarantee the participation of all our clients, providers, collaborators, and their families to develop a more diverse, equitive, and inclusive Chile through generating practices, initiatives under a common strategies focused and centered on people. And within our diversity and inclusion project, we have inspiring principles, which are equality of opportunities, universal access, non-discrimination, and awareness. And based on these, our, our pillars and action groups are the ones you can see here. Our pillars are to be able to create inclusive management of people always recognize and acknowledging the identity of all people that are part of society and that are part of Caja Los Andes. We also seek to create experiences with our collaborators that are always in an environment of occlusion to provide a good work environment so that all people feel part of this. Another one has to do with creating a culture or creating inclusive an inclusive culture and leadership that support the values that we have as an organization and also the ones that we have in our area of inclusion and diversity and finally to create impact processes where all our systems and structures all our practices all our actions within the organization should have foundations or should include inclusion in its foundations and today at Caja, we are always monitoring our groups of interest. For example, gender equality, women leadership, migrants, disabilities, and senior citizens. And in the percentages that you can see here, 62.3% gender equality, currently 45% of our payroll are women in leadership roles, migrants, we have 3.8%, 2% of people with disabilities and 1.9% of seniors working at our company. Now about this uh, program, Mass Inclusion, our flagship program, we have our cycle of people management. What we want now to convey is that we are throughout the whole cycle from the moment that they start their path within the company till even they decide to leave 
are when the contract or their contract are terminated. We provide assessments and manage the needs of reasonable adjustments so that these processes are granted with equality. Based on this, we are always analyzing, adjusting our policies, protocols, and our practices because we know well that the world is changing and we also have to change our actions adjusted to what is required today. And for this reason, our actions last year was for sure, all our actions were transformed. We didn't have, for example, flexible hour programs for telework. And to protect our people, we performed an assessment of the, case in the cases of people that had some type of disabilities or with or for health conditions to grant them the opportunity to work remotely. And as an organization, we went from having no zero remote work to 60% remote work. People that work remotely in the organization and 83% of them, 83% of people with disability were working under this modality, but this required to make adjustments so they could have access to be able to connect to the internet, to use tools. And we weren't prepared for this. And for that, we created manuals, performed different actions to be able to create awareness in the people, or for the people that have disabilities of how to address COVID-19 as well as their leadership. And to conclude, this illustrates our diversity and inclusion management. We have different um, initiatives that we perform, but the base, its foundations are always to create these reasonable adjustments to the needs of each one of the individuals that work at our organization. We perform webinars, workshops, accessible for everyone with the aim of creating awareness on um, basic concepts uh, from our area of diversity and inclusion. And, uh, and to conclude and wrap up, these are some of our initiatives performed during 2020. Without getting into too much detail, this work and the work that we perform as an organization wouldn't be possible without the support of a diverse and inclusive ecosystem, receiving support from different organizations that give their help to trans to make this transformation to become an organization can say that is diverse and inclusive. Thank you for your attention. And now I'll yield to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Jocelyn, for your great talk. And now I want to leave you with Claudia Ochoa, Manager of Training of Honest Logistics in Mexico. She's licensed in international relationship with a diploma in labor inclusion of, with people of disabilities. She's been involved in conferences and seminar of good practices of inclusion at a national and international level. Their main projects are manufacturing storage workshops for comprehensive development of families, formal education, a path to the development of capabilities and productivity within organizations. I leave you with Claudia Ochoa. Thank you very much to Zero Project for opening this space to be able to share with you our program of formal education that's already older than 12 years, and it has had great results and satisfaction. Before I begin, I would like to share with you who we are. We are a 100% Mexican company with 16 years in the market, and we work on logistics, storage, distribution, and currently 
we have more than 3,200 collaborators. I would like to say something aside here because I would like to share with you the inclu labor inclusion policy. If I may, I will read it. Honest Logistics is recognized as an inclusive company that promotes human rights of the vulnerable groups, incorporates to these groups to the labor environment, supplying the correct conditions for their labor and personal conditions. That's why the motor of Honest Logistics is to encourage skills and not the limitations of each person. And that's what we keep as a company because what we want here is to encourage capabilities and the skills of each one of our vulnerable groups, in this case, people with disabilities. So how do we start the program? It was an initiative from the management in 2009 that saw the need of supporting the collaborators to continue or finish their studies. And that this would give us as a result to open their expectations to have more uh, better trained collaborators and also to discover talents. This was very important for us. How did okay? How did we start this program? In the moment where we recruited people, we noticed that most of our collaborators, our prospects, didn't know how to count, or or to read or write, even if they showed their certificates when that they finished their primary school. But the reality is that they didn't have the skills. So we took the task of committing the collaborator and the family, because you need to work with the families, to, so they would support us, in this case, where the, with their child to continue on their studies and there was unrest because it's not that easy there was an unrest on some tutors that didn't think that their children could continue developing skills especially in people with intellectual disabilities and deaf people and that's little by little we try, tried to make these people have this chance. And now we have multiple programs, but the formal education is fundamental for our company. The goals were to, well, to spread the education, formal education services from letter literacy to the post degrees with collaborators and their families, because we do this extensive, this applies to all of them. This helps us to create a, a virtuous circle. And that is very important. The second goal was to encourage the labor, academic, and personal development of each one of these people. But now, which services of formal education do we render? Well, two hour weekly advisory services in their labor schedule. They didn't have to go anywhere because in our distribution centers, we have installations which are in uh, good for this advisory we work on the management with them we have specialized advisories for each one of these disabilities internet access also they had to have this culture technology culture and all the applications for the tests had to do with an institution an official institution. That means that it was a, a virtuous circle. Here, we have something very interesting, which is we had the need of, train, of training our advisors. Even if they are teachers by profession, they had to develop skills also. For instance, sign language, Mexican sign language, that was basic for a community of uh, hearing impaired people. And we had the task of becoming specialized in the institutions with didactic material for people with any disability. And that helped us to so that all these tools were included and the groups were mixed people with disabilities and without disabilities. 
and that also makes everyone aware of our population. And now I will talk about this part of how many people do we have? We have 117 people we have with different disabilities, which is multiple visual, motor, intellectual, hearing. And we do a census to see how they have been developing. They've developed skills, for instance, the telling if we hire somebody that doesn't have that counting skill, we start with this program and what they do, the result is that they, that person in three, maybe four or five months, they will be able to have that skill to count. And we start encouraging their learning and in labor insertion and also development of skills. Scholarship, scholarity, and we have this charge. In the university, we have people that they know how to read, that they know how to write. We also have this, this training. And everything works hand in hand with federal institutions. It's important to acknowledge, to acknowledge all of our graduate, graduate people. In internal communication, we make this calling, this invitation to continue growing. If you finish high school, we can support you with going to college and so on. And we create this chain. This, is, this really helps us to motivate not only the population or the people with disabilities, but also without. And here I want to mention that there's there somebody with who's had this lacking sometimes or that haven't had the tools and necessary tools to for their development they are more eager and they feel more satisfied well going to another point that i would like to talk about and to finish my talk here it's basic that there's a, a there's a little video here, but it's basic that. Okay, let's watch the video. My name is Gerardo. And everyone that comes here that don't that have a disability they help us to study and to grow and all the support everyone that needs a career some of us that came here to work this is my work we come here very gladly and with all the capabilities many people don't understand that you you need to be smart and to continue growing here is we come to the company and I would like to keep working and studying and growing with my career. Hopefully I would like to finish my studies and thank you very much for paying attention. And many people need to study and hopefully that they can. We came here, those that want to study we support, they support everyone that needs it here. Everyone that needs support, support your children. So support them in studies and hopefully everything turns out great. Thank you. Well, this would be everything and thank you very much for being in letting us share the honest and labor inclusion program and encouraging formal education thank you very much thank you claudia for your presentation now to your project latin america 2021 i'd like to leave with you with 
Matias Cáceres, he's the general manager, SKA Bernlier, Chile, a, with an MBA and experience in the auto industry, logistics. He is incorporated in the organization, different programs aimed at creating and acquiring in tools and employment. Currently, he participates as an advisor of the program for education with intellectual disabilities. Ese Berger. Matias, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alvaro, for your presentation. Uh, thank you to Zero Project for granting me the opportunity to be here and to tell you about our experience, what we call Virtuous Transformation, a program that was created from the automobile industry. We are representatives of different brands in Latin America and, and how this program that we call Virtuous Transformation has different stars and protagonists. And I'd like to start with them because they have been key in the success of this program. This was created from a by or because of a uh, company problem in our at our dealerships. We had 56% of turnover that had to do with salaries or benefits, but these were positions that rotated a lot. And we were losing too much time in retraining and hiring new people. And additionally, we knew of a uh, public school, Santa Teresa de Avila, who had a great team that received children with different levels of disabilities. And they looked for not only to continue with their classroom education, but to provide other tools so they could insert themselves and find different job opportunities. And we wanted to address our problem. And together, the school saw that they could receive tools from a transnational company because they and we started to connect these ends and we created an inclusion program. We started the when we started the program, we encountered the first paradigm, as Alvaro mentioned with that mother, we encountered fear. We didn't have experience in inclusion, but also families were also afraid that we because they were receiving information from different professionals at school and they there was uncertainty of what was going to happen with this so then we realized that the children and wanted to participate in this program and we started with a program with two teenagers from the program in logistics, and we started to dream with this start, first with a two-month internship, and we started to address our practices differently, extending these the periods of the internship. And we developed a program that seeks to train uh, youth with disabilities we do them at school and also to perform these internships at our dealerships. But our idea wasn't to create employment. We wanted to create employability to provide tools so they could enter any industry. And here we started to look for tools in the government and we reached Chile Valora. This is a tripartite organization unions, government, and companies to that provide certifications. And we wanted to find a certification for them to access and then to insert them in the labor market. 
how the, the numbers. How are the numbers then after these 10 years? The turnover that we had before was 56% and dropped to 27%. Our work environment that is measured through a survey that we do in Latin America every two years went from 4.85 to 5.82. And productivity, the productivity of all the youth that participated in the program has a 99% of attendance. That is the level of commitment that they have is through the roof, without a doubt. The biggest benefit that we've had is something that is immeasurable is the pride and the sense of belonging that is created in our collaborators to be part of these changes in their lives. We were awarded by Zero Project for the same program. We were also invited to Vienna, to the UN. Also the inclusion law in Chile was also signed in this building. And so we felt very proud of collaborators. But the biggest change that we've seen and that we have learned was the change in the trajectory of lives. By connecting ourselves to this school, we're able to see how these how this youth how they were able to transform themselves into people that could also uh, provide value. And Nicolas, an example that, is, or, that I'd like to show you, became the most important income provider of his home. My name is, my name is Nicolas Gonzalez, and this is my story. When I was a child, I didn't have many dreams. When I was four or five, I arrived at the school. My parents took a lot of care of me. The family had serious, serious difficulties because they were afraid. When I arrived at the school, I learned to be self-sufficient. Six years ago, we were asked to participate in the uh, labor inclusion program of CNLJ. And the truth to work with people with disability or youth with disability was challenging. We provide them training to improve their employability. When they are given the opportunity to access a job, I interview the parents and I was practically a whole morning and I couldn't convince them. Their family at the beginning of the project, or my parents would drop me off my job and they would wait for me outside. But one day I decided just to take the bus. That was great. To work at the Sheraton for me is a dream. It is a tipping point at our hotel where he provides great vibes and energy to the team. And he starts to support his family significantly, where they never expected that their son could be the most important income provider of, of the house. In my future, my dream is to buy a house, an apartment, and a car. And when humans start to dream and to live a true life, it, it's overwhelming. Thank you to a lot of people. I'm a happy man. Welcome to Sheraton Club. Well, every year we see different stories and we're still surprised. As I said at the beginning, a company from the automobile industry and we seek to, and being part of this inclusive circle where companies, people and society look to find a way And these programs are self-financed, self-sufficient. To close, just to convey what we talked of, the recipe, or what is the secret sauce. First, the commitment 
from executives or higher management are key. As Caja Los Andes said, we need to have general management on board and the board then to break paradigms. We were afraid as, as in the presentation, as the presentation show, the parents were also afraid. If we don't have the courage to break down these paradigms, it's very difficult to have success in any program of diversity management. It was a continuous learning experience. This is every year we adapt and approve our programs, understanding different realities as what happened with the pandemic. Now we had to find a way to do this online. It has to be a win-win. This is not a cliche. This is key because this in philanthropy, there has to be certain demands on both sides so that this pride and to make the program progress or progress. And to conclude, we talked at the beginning that diversity, diverse companies are necessary within changing environment as the pandemic has showed, diverse companies are much more productive. Diverse companies have better inclusion. Companies that have better inclusion do things much better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matias, for this great experience in the labor framework of inclusion in SK Verge. Now, I want to leave you with Vidya Rao. She's the Director of Inclusion uh, Disability in Wibro. She leads the inclusion section and inclusion and diversity of the of Wibro for the last four years. Vidya constantly works to integrate disability into the DNA of the organization and normalizing it. She's been the advisor to several business leaders in the adoption of inclusion strategies and making breakthroughs to bring disability to the forefront, meaning helping leaders to accept disability as part of human diversity and unleashing power. I leave you with Vidya. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Zero Project team, for organizing this. Uh, it's a pleasure to share our experiences from Wipro with regard to disability inclusion. Uh, so to add to my introduction, uh, I, I also have a visual impairment. Uh, like, you know, I mean, it's basically since my birth. And uh, so that's, that's where, you know, so I bring that lived experiences of disability to the table. As far as Wipro is concerned, so we are a multinational company with $8.5 billion uh, of the revenue, and uh, we have a workforce of over uh, 2 lakh employees spread across 65 countries. Um, so with regard to disability inclusion, the way we perceive it or the way we see it is that that you know, so it is something is absolutely important for the organization for the uh, you know part of the inclusion and diversity. So while we also embrace uh, gender, uh, uh, the uh, different sexual orientations, which is the LGBT inclusion, race, ethnicity, cultural inclusion, etc. So disability is one of the key focus areas for us. And we have been uh, embracing it for more than a decade. You know, it's for us, it's like part of the human diversity. Now, let me just quickly tell you, you know, the philosophy behind that. Uh, first and foremost, you know, so the way that we uh, organize everything under the banner of disability inclusion is with the idea or uh, going by the motto of UN's uh, principle, right? I mean, UN's motto, which is nothing about us without us. So what it means is that, you know, so we are, Absolutely, uh, you know, glad to share with you that we work with around 700 employees with disability across different locations, and this this again spreads across, you know, to 10 to 13 different types of uh, disabilities. Now, whenever we strategize or we uh, devise a program initiative, so we uh, take uh, in consultation with our employees with disability. So that's how we do, right? On the other hand. We also get mind share of people, the key stakeholders, the leaders, etc. Because unless we get the leadership buy-in, unless uh, the leaders speak about disability inclusion, we believe it's not possible for us to make a progress. 
so that is how you know so that's our philosophy uh, all together and of course you know so we reinforce we kind of you know ensure that this is done even through the policy procedure because in a large organization like us so if we do not have the policy procedures in place so definitely we will not be able to drive a very very i mean uh, consistent uh, manner of uh, disability inclusion practices right i mean we may not be able to drive that disability inclusive workplace so that is uh, you know all about our philosophy now as far as the um, uh, the practices the innovations are concerned one of the unique things that you know we uh, do at wipro is that you know it's called as something called as social bridge the so social bridge essentially creates a platform for our employees with disability where their voices are heard so because you know we may not know what is happening on the ground say for example when somebody with a hearing disability is uh, allocated to a particular project so what is really happening how is the communication taking place how are they able to include this person we may not know that uh, if we don't organize a social bridge connect right so that is something that we do and the beauty is that you know it is a very very constructive meeting so once we have the social bridge meeting where people voice their concerns we take it back to the leadership we work with the organizations ecosystem to get it right like for example right now we are running uh, a particular program called bench program for employees with disabilities which means that people those who are on bench or a free pool means when there are no projects etc how is that you know so they're going to be able to engage with the organization how are they uh, able to quickly get themselves deployed back into the uh, projects without any discriminations etc so these are some of the affirmative programs that you know so that we have put in place so now on the other hand again like i said earlier to you know uh, talk about the mind share of uh, the leaders and the key stakeholders so the way we go about is that you know while uh, we bring in the disability inclusion expertise we tell our leaders we educate our leaders that you know so that they will uh, sort of uh, i mean uh, be able to drive like for example um, uh, so when we work with our, with our uh, uh information technology department uh, for digital accessibility or when we work with our uh, facilities department for the infrastructure accessibility etc so we give them the guidance but uh, you know what we constantly reiterate is that it is a shared responsibility so it's it is something that you know so we are all equally responsible for creating that equitable workplace for our employees with disability so that's how we do so we bring in the uh, understanding of the compliances standards the etiquettes uh, etc and the information technology team so they understand how they need to integrate uh, the wcag standards or any other uh, digital accessibility standards part of a system so as a result the applications around the 60 to 70% of our applications are accessible and which is be, you know developed based on the universal principle designs now what is also very interesting and innovative about our uh, practice about disability inclusion at wipro is we have been able to offer digital accessibility solutions to our uh, clients so which is something that you know uh, basis our internal interactions uh, with our employees with disability and our expertise put in together in terms of uh, the digital accessibility or the overall management of how we need to effectively include someone with a disability or create the disability inclusive workspace so that has kind of resulted in this a uh, business revenue model for us so typically you know the uh, the delivery teams at wipro so when they reach out to the clients they also offer this as one of the solutions and as a result today we are offering the digital accessibility solutions for about 10 to 15 international clients like right countries in the us uk canada of course india etc and especially these are banking sector organizations government sector uh in the, in uh, in canada you know so we offer uh, some of the uh, digital inclusion i mean digital accessibility services for the government uh, uh, related work in canada 
so that is uh, how you know we do and the other innovation piece that you know so which we are uh, very excited to share with you is about how we include the disabled uh, disabled entrepreneurs also part of our supply chain diversity right so one part of uh, the inclusion that we look into is the workforce the employee base within the organization and like i said earlier disability makes uh, one of the key elements part of this particular diversity of the workforce similarly we have extended the diversity of uh, our supply chain where we invite uh, the suppliers the entrepreneurs who work with us in terms of you know providing various kinds of services to be able to sort of come from different walks of life and uh, recently we did a uh, the conclave uh, in india where we invited small entrepreneurs so that was specifically to promote the small entrepreneurs and then i'm happy to share with you that we specifically made an effort towards inviting disabled entrepreneurs and in fact as a result of the conclave and how we have been able to interact with them seeing the value that these disabled entrepreneurs bring to the table we have also empaneled these disabled entrepreneurs uh, so which means that you know we will be not just including our uh, people with disabilities i mean part of the workforce uh, we we will also be getting uh, you know the entrepreneurs with disability a business opportunity with a large organization like us so which has a larger impact on the society and overall so that is what i uh, you know i thought i'd share with you all and happy to take any questions uh, if there are any questions or any clarifications thank you muchas gracias vidya por tu thank you very much vidya for your presentation now at this moment uh, the presentation will open a q and a and for this, we'll start with a question that I'd like to make to all participants and to all our speakers. And this is, how do you incorporate people with disabilities, the definitions of the strategies that you made and what have been the impacts of these in your organizations? An open question. Well, for us, as I mentioned in my presentation, we've been working for quite a while now with this program, including people with disabilities, and that although in its beginnings, it took time and it was difficult because we didn't have any experience and we hadn't hired people with disabilities. Currently, though, the perspectives of uh, people and these inspiring principles of non-discrimination in equal opportunities have allowed to involve and bring people that are part of the program within the organization and to be equal peers and it's been a whole work to create awareness to destroy myths and biases that people can have by not having contact with people with disabilities but without a doubt today, it's something that is very highly regarded by the organization, especially with new people that enter the organization. It's very well regarded, this environment where people are treated equally, where skills are valued over than any type of label that can be placed on them. Thank you, Jocelyn. I don't know if anybody would like to mention somebody. On our side, I'd like to. The impact that we have had in our strategies have been related to the changes in work environment that have higher levels of inclusion, not only because we have an important amount of youth with cognitive disabilities, but the branches or the dealerships are the ones that also get on involved in this in this program so it's a reason of pride for the company to have this program 
And our strategy is to find new areas. We also have a program also for dual education for our mechanics, where they work both at our shops and also in their classrooms. Claudia, a question for you. What challenges have you found when implementing your project? Added also either due to the pandemic or in issues inside the organization. For us, it's been difficult. The awareness side in the company. That part, as Jocelyn said, uh, removing biases, etc. Moreover, families too. The pandemic was a very critical situation for everyone. Despite that, families were very steadfast and and were very firm in saying that their children couldn't go to work and they removed them from their jobs. And that was a reason or cause it or caused great sadness because our youth said that they didn't want to stop working because they said the pandemic will never go away. And that was a challenge that at least for us, was a very difficult situation However, we started to create awareness in family members to address the situation. Well, I'd like to continue now with Vidya with the following question. You commented of the social bridge as part of the WePro strategy. How do you see the impact of the project in this case in society and how is it connected with public initiatives where you have implemented this? Sure, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the social bridge is essentially, like I said, to uh, get people's voice heard. And, uh, you know, if I have to speak about the impact of it, uh, I would think that seeing is believing when it comes to disability, right? Many times there are a lot of biases. We have been talking about it. And how do I break the bias unless I have somebody with a disability? directly speak and people generally, you know, I mean, not interact directly with someone with a disability. Unless we kind of, you know, break those kind of uh, notions and et cetera, uh, no matter what, somebody may be a software programmer, but the person may not be yet fully uh, conducting themselves with a lot of dignity or may not be receiving the same level of treatment like others. But when they speak in a forum like Social Bridge, so it boosts their confidence for somebody with a disability, and it also breaks the biases and any misconceptions uh, of people without disability so that, you know, it helps in terms of bridging the gap. Now, as far as the public initiatives are concerned that, you know, we are not uh, from a Wipro strategy point of view, uh, we are not directly uh, connected with any public uh, related initiatives. However, you know, we do have Wipro Cares as our uh, CSR wing. So through that CSR wing, uh, you know, the, uh, we work with a lot of organizations, the nonprofit ecosystem that we work with. And then we have adapted a similar policy and a similar philosophy there that where, uh, you know, getting to hear from children with disabilities or empowering them throughout their education is what is the kind of an impact that, you know, so that we have been able to see there. Because, you know, when children with uh, disability are able to uh, study and perform and, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 score good academic, academic scores, so then it has a very positive impact on the family and on the communities, right? So that is the kind of uh, impact that we have been able to see through our CSR programs. Thank you. Finally, I'd like to leave you with an open question if possible, but just if you could comment, what are the goals for you for next year, each one of your, for each one of your organizations? I don't know 
who would like to start? So I can go. Um, you know, for us, it's very clear. Uh, we we know that uh, that you know we will have to strengthen on the numbers. So that is something that we are working towards. In fact, we have something called as a train and hire, uh, which is a win-win situation, win-win hiring model, where we onboard uh, the job seekers with disabilities. We train them, we groom them, and then we give them the interview opportunity. We already did uh, two pilots, and both of them are extremely successful, successful and highly uh, well received. So we would like to continue that so that we are able to strengthen our numbers. That's one. Second, uh, you know, we are a global organization. Now, we have done a lot of work in India, but uh, we are also now, right now, in the process of streamlining that work in the uh, countries like UK and US, at least. Especially in the US, we are seeing that there is a huge requirement for setting up the ERG, the Employee Resource Group. Uh, so we are, as we speak right now, in the process of setting up such a disability uh, employee resource group, so, which is again, you know, it's going to build that power of community and help us become a lot more strong going forward in terms of our policies and et cetera, you know, so become a lot more disability inclusive. And third, a very clear goal is to also diversify the type of disabilities. Like I said, today we have about 10 to 13 disabilities that are represented across Wipro starting with uh, you know, locomotor, visual, and some amount of intellectual disability, et cetera. But definitely, we also have to tap into a lot more invisible disabilities like psychosocial disabilities or blood disorders, et cetera. So that is our uh, other goal you know, So as we go along. I don't know if any, well, thank you very much. I don't know if any, Anybody else would like to comment? Well, one of our goals is at Honest Logistic is to remove this digital gap for people with disabilities. So we're betting heavily on digital literacy and to include them because sometimes they lack the skill. So our goal for the next year is to open up this field for people with disabilities. Jocelyn Alvaro, yes. On our side, from Caja Los Andes, our goal for 2021 has to do with continue to update our diversity and inclusion policies. As I said, it's a policy that was created in 2016. And for that, without a doubt, it needs to be updated for the times, for current times. And one of the challenges that we also have is to be able to continue and to expand this area to create impact, not only within Caja Los Andes, but in all the benefits that we also provide to people, to the people that are affiliated to us. And also to diversify the impact groups that we have included in our policies. Thank you. Alvaro, on our side, is to recover the occupational rate of students that have been included in our internships, but also to recover the practices that we haven't been able to do or internships that have to be done online. Thank you. Together with thanking all of you and to wish the best to all of the your initiatives and, and we're very happy to have had the possibility to participate in this panel and with this we are close this session of zero project Latin America 2021 and this session of diversity management. Thank you to Jocelyn Pimentel from Caja Los Andes, Claudio Ochoa from Honest Logistics, Matias Cáceres from Sigurd Berger, Chavidja Rao from WePro, and thank you to all the organization organizers of the session. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.